have a, a different, I want to say big events coming that we want to uh, hold up in prayer this morning. Um, one of them is uh, just being able to um, have different speakers come in for faith and, and freedom. And you can kind of look on that site and see, you know, who's going to be here when. And those are some pretty big deals because that's like um, a spearhead into the region spiritually. Every time we do that, that's a voice speaking into the region saying, let's make a difference. And, um, and, and there's something about understanding, you know, you can have knowledge, and that's the knower, right? Um, but when you bring it to a place of understanding, it causes you to be able to stand under something and support it, right? So you can't support just knowing all by itself. You know, you can know a certain fact, but that doesn't mean you're able to stand under it and say, no, I support that with everything I've got. I understand. And um, so bringing understanding through faith or freedom is just huge um, for all of the questions that we haven't had answered yet, especially. And knowledge is power, but it's only power when you bring it into the fullness of understanding. And then understanding weighs that with wisdom. And you always hear me say wisdom's panoramic, which means it shows you the past, it brings you to the present, out of the past, and then it says, hey, this is what we could do for the future. Let's, let's look at this whole thing. So even with our own lives as we're praying, we, we need to come to a place where we've got not just knowledge, but we crave and we hunger the understanding regarding the knowledge that we have. Now, uh, sometimes the prophetic works in a way where you you have something in your knower, like, oh, I've got the knowledge about this. Like, I'm supposed to, you know, whatever it is. And, um, and then all of a sudden, there'll be a prophetic that will come forward, a, a prophecy, a, um, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, something where the understanding comes up to a higher level about that knowledge. You're like, oh, you get that aha moment where it's like, I did not see that. Right? So that understanding now empowers the knowledge in a whole new way, which causes you to be able to stand there for having done all to stand, you stand, and now you're standing, you're understanding, right? And that understanding gives you the power then to hold up under different things. You know, from what I understand, a lot of times I'll say that, or to my understanding, um, we're able to do this, or I'm able to, you know, say no or yes to a certain thing to my understanding. To the level that I know and to the level that I understand, I am going to stand there for. So part of, someone had asked me a couple weeks ago, you know, it says having done all to stand, stand there for. What's the all I'm supposed to be doing? Having done all to stand. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing in the all part. Like, did I do all? How do I know if I did all? See, um, So part of it is get the knowledge. And, and I think that that's how we learn the word. You know, as a child, we're learning, you know, this is who Moses was. This is who Noah was or whatever it is. And you get this knowledge. But when you get the understanding of the covenants and you get the understanding of the picture and the types that went from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you get the understanding of who you are in that position and that, that exchange we can make. There's power in that understanding. So we first have to ask ourselves in any situation, uh, do, do I just have knowledge on something but not a lot of understanding? Because having done all, therefore, to stand, stand. Okay, if I'm going to have done all, that means I've got to get some understanding for me to stand. Does that make sense? Yeah, are we awake? Yeah? Um, it's a simple concept, but when you think about it, you think about it, you'll be, in a, uh, you'll be in a spot where you get that aha moment. It will empower you to stand there for. There's something where, like, you just won't move. You just won't move on an issue or whatever, you know. Um, doesn't matter if the person threatens your life or jail or whatever it is. Like, I am moving. The truth is the truth. You cannot be a martyr without understanding. I'm not talking about they catch you and you get killed. You don't really get the concept of why you're in that spot. And then they call you a martyr. I'm, I'm telling you when they say you deny Christ or we're going to. Right? There is something to that, like, it's too late, I understand. 
I don't just have the knowledge. I understand. Therefore, I will stand, having done all. See the difference? So Acts um, chapter 1 and 2 talks about Holy Spirit coming. And the Amplified says he's diffused us throughout our souls. That's how he came. He just blew through uh, that happening, and people began to speak in tongues. He blew through their souls. Their mind, will, and emotions got changed. Um, but it, it also says that when the Spirit comes, what will happen? You'll become witnesses so that you can witness from here to here to here. And it names all the different cities, right? And to the uttermost parts of the earth so it can expand to be so big in that area. But when you have the, the Spirit, it's Holy Spirit's there to make us witnesses. That's the point of it. I actually had someone at TBO one time tell me that um, they got the baptism because they thought that's what you had to do to be that religion. But they didn't know the baptism of the Spirit. It was kind of like, well, I don't know, I, I guess we were supposed to. I didn't think I'd be, be able to belong to the church or whatever because I know you guys believe. Right? <laughs> and so, so pray over me regarding the baptism of the Spirit. It's like, uh, no, that <laughs> doesn't work that way. Uh, because... When you ask for Holy Spirit to come, he's going to empower you to be a witness. Something's going to be required of you. It's not a ticket. It's not another star next to water baptism. <laughs> you know, let's see, do we do all those things and we put the little star on our chart? Yes, I'm a good Christian. It's not that so you can belong to a church or have a certain religious view or whatever. It is the fact that you're saying, wow, I understand my salvation. And what I get about this salvation is the things that he's asking me to do, I cannot do by myself. I can't do it. I need more, right? And salvation and water baptism, man, they're just like this. And then Holy Spirit moving and empowering you just lights that whole salvation up, if you understand it. So what's dangerous in the church, the body of Christ, is we have just enough information to be dangerous, but not enough to know. Not enough to get something done. That's why if someone asks us, a lot of people, when, when you're asked, you know, uh, tell me about the baptism of the Spirit. Well, you get to speak in tongues. Okay. <laughs> Think what that sounds like when you don't know. For a person who already knows, that go, oh, yeah, okay. But if you don't know, that's just like, so I'm going to, like, just randomly speak a different language, and this is helping me how. See, we have to be beyond the knowledge and move into the understanding about what we're about to help impart to that person. But when it's imparted, something's going to be required of them. Same thing with salvation. We prevent salvation, like, hurry, get up here, because you don't want to go to hell, right? I'm going to lead you to prayer, all right? Oh, whew, now you're not going to hell. That's good. That's good, you know, and, and instead of looking at it like uh, we just asked them to lay their life down in exchange, now they owe him everything. Altar calls would look different, wouldn't they? I've been practicing this, and it's so hard even for a person when you, when you present the gospel like that for them to wrap their head around it and be able to understand it fully, right? You know, they're going to take a step into it. But I never want them to look back and be like, hey, nobody told me this. I feel tricked into this. I thought my life was going to get better. See, part of the life getting better is that now I understand the power that's available to me when I go to help my family and all hell breaks loose. Right? Now I need the spirit of the living God to infill me so that I can impart that power, the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead, who dwells in me and is quickening my mortal body. You hang out with me, you're going to get some of that. See, there, there's something to it. But what I'm bringing this up for is something's required. And when we are a prayer team or a people of prayer, 
um, sometimes we pray, of course, to the level of our knowledge and our understanding. When Holy Spirit prays through us, many times we don't understand. We're like, I don't, I don't know where that came from, but it just came out. Or, um, you know, several places where it talks about if we're praying uh, just randomly or we'd, we don't know how to pray in a situation, pray in the Spirit. He'll pray through you. Okay, so does that mean if you yield to him, you're going to understand? If you understood, you'd pray it yourself. See? So that means what he's about to say through us, we're just like, I didn't get that memo, but this is pretty cool. It's just coming out, right? Whether it be in tongues and then interpretation of tongues, right? Whether it be you begin to prophesy. You ever prophesy and hear yourself prophesying and you're like, I did not know that. <laughs> I have done that where I just like, okay, Lord, I just start opening my mouth and a prophecy starts coming out. And I'm like, I had no clue about that one. That's pretty good. I didn't know that because it's not me doing it. If I was doing it to the level of my understanding, it would only have the power to the degree of my understanding. So sometimes to the degree of my understanding actually can cut it. On a lower level thing, I can come to the level of my understanding and pray on something and just come automatic. I don't, you know, it's not like, oh, I need the Holy Spirit to really pray through me because I know what the Bible says about it. And I just say that thing and the word itself goes in and divides things. We have to come up from praying like that to praying in a, such a yielded way that it, it's, it surprises us. It's a heavenly understanding. It's where he says something and now, oh, snap, I have to grow to that. I have to figure that out. There was a prophecy that came forward. I have to seek him to figure out what that means. You ever have a godly dream? It's the same thing. You know, I just know it was from God. It must mean something about this. Oh, no, you're missing. You're missing it. You got to take that thing apart and ask Holy Spirit to give you a heavenly understanding of that dream. And it will require you to come up to a higher level than your present thinking. It's a heavenly level. See that? Religion teaches us stay at the level that's announced. So at this church, as leaders, Fern and I would be the main ones directing, don't come past this level. If this was really religious here, if you come past this level, I might correct you. Now, that doesn't give people freedom to get really weird because we'll correct you for that. But at the same time, there is a thing that goes, it goes like, well, show me where the level is, where we're safe. You know, I had a dream and I felt like it was from God, but I ain't sharing that with anybody. That's what's sitting in a lot of churches dreams and visions and prophetic and it's sitting inside the temples of the people who have been baptized with the spirit but they can't say a thing hmm? because there's been a level that's been announced and you can't go past that level so if you do you're one of those people right so what will happen is you'll get, you'll get somebody who's like fed up with it or somebody who really doesn't have the understanding and they just go rogue, right? And they'll just go prophesying whatever. And then the religious part will say, see, that's why we don't allow that. Because that rogue person, there's always a rogue person. They were in Jesus' time, right? Just you have that weird moment. You're like, what was that all about? That was not God. And so there, there's something to us learning how to, as we pray, how to move in the spirit in such a way um, that we know I'm to the level of my understanding. But we're not just wanting to settle there. If we're praying on a certain subject, it's like, what is his understanding? How does he see this? Well, for me to see from the heavenly realm, and, and to tap into that, I have to have the spirit of the living God. Why? Because Holy Spirit connects me to Jesus, who is the word, and brings the word to life, who's connected to the Father. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. So there is a flow up, 
and there's a flow down. When the heavenly exchange takes place, I'm not even going to get to the word I was going to preach this morning. <laughs> it's a whole different thing. So there's this heavenly thing that's going to take place, and there's an understanding of that. Here's how we engage. Spirit of the living God, pray through me right now. Right? And, and when that happens, there's this connection to the heavenly realm. And Jesus goes, uh-huh, yeah. Let's activate some word. Right? He's the word. Let's activate the word. And when that happens, the father goes, yeah, that's right. He's the beginning. He's the end. He starts a good work. He finishes it. But all of that goes through the flow up and then through the flow down. So we have to broaden our understanding to grab a hold of that. So you get in a crisis situation, you will grab for your understanding first. Most people. Crisis situation, something happened right now. You leave here, there's an accident out here. It's like, ah, a lot of people just grab for their Jesus. Oh, help. We'll, we'll say short prayers like that. Lord God, have mercy. We'll just throw stuff out. And are those good things? They can be. They can be good things. Um, you know, uh, but when you begin to pray in the spirit, it gets taken care of immediately. It's beyond your understanding. So there was an accident as the bus was coming from Mora last night to bring the people down to um, TBO. And, you know, some of the people said it looked pretty intense. So that's an instantly praying the spirit. Because your brain will try to wrap your own understanding around it. And that's, the, I'm sorry, I'm only going to be able to help you to the level of my understanding. That's really what we just told. You know, I'll say something good, but the level of my understanding only goes that far. So now I need the spirit of the living God. And he'll say through the people that are praying, whatever needs to be taken care of. You can be confident that the job gets done because it's beyond your level of understanding. He knows the people. He knows the person who was laying there. He knows the person who was working on them. He knows all the hearts. He knows all of that. And so Holy Spirit prays, and it gets taken care of. Woo! Now, what's really cool is when you pray in his understanding, and he gives you the interpretation, and it blows your mind. You're like, oh, what? Oh. Uh, that's how you know. Sometimes we'll get stuck, though, where um, it'll, it'll, we'll still be looking for an interpretation that will meet our understanding. Right? Now, I'm, I'm going to do something intense, so brace yourself. I'm not mocking anybody. I'm not saying um, that n across the board, I'm not using an exacto knife to say this is exactly how it is. But I will say, when I first got born again, there was such a move of the Spirit whew, in this revival church. And um, over 100 people got saved in a short period of time. And I was one of them. Many ended up in the ministry. And I was one of them. Yet, I was sitting in services. I didn't have the understanding of uh, tongues and, and interpretation of tongues. So um, I'm trying to get the understanding. I'm asking all kinds of questions. But there was this little grandma. And any time there was quiet, she would have a message, okay? Anytime. It's just like, you almost brace yourself like she's, she's going to go, right? <laughs> you know, because it was like, that's what, that's what happens. Um, yeah, and, and so all of a sudden, um, she would say something. And she always started out the same way. Now, I'm not saying God can't speak through you like this. But even as a new saved, I was like, is, it, is that how God talks to everybody? Oh, my children, come unto me. She always started like that. Oh, my children, come unto me. Um, I love you. Okay, this is a word of encouragement, right? But it would just be a few sentences like that, and it was the same thing every single time. So well, later on, I, I was like, do we need to be reminded that much? Maybe that's what it is. Because I'm a person who's kind of nosy, and I... Like, why? Why does that happen that way? How come? Can you say the same thing over and over? Does God talk like that the same over and over? 
Have you ever had those questions? Yeah, people have those questions, but here's what happens. We go, when it's happening, we're just like, she's doing it. Okay, all right. And then you just move on. You just move on. Um, but the pastor that was in that church, he had a boldness come on him, and not that he was being mean or anything like that. But what happened is there were times he'd say, that's good, but that's not it. Somebody else has the interpretation. What? <laughs> can you do that? Yeah, you can. Uh, I was in a service where uh, a guy got up, and there was tongues. And I mean, the spirit was just thick in the place. The anointing was like blowing your face off. And he went to interpret, and he went rogue. And, um, but I didn't know because I was, you know, newly saved or whatever. And it was like, it was like fire uh, from God going to kill us all kind of interpretation. If you don't get your act together kind of thing. And I was like, whoa. Well, I was raised with that kind of uh, concept and discipline. So I'm thinking, that's God the Father. <laughs> and it was so refreshing as my insides were doing this and people were looking at each other. And then you close your eyes tighter because that keeps you safe. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just do that. And, uh, you know, you pinch your, your, the seat in front of you. You just do stuff. You're like, just let it pass, Lord. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we do that? Because we're afraid of offending someone. Um, and the pastor got up, walked over, just put his hand on him and said, you know, that was a good try. But you missed it, and here's where. And I don't want you to feel bad about it because everyone needs to step out and do this. Explain the whole thing to him in front of the congregation. Have you ever seen that done? Hmm? Yeah, it needs to be done more. Instead of saying, we're just going to keep it at this level. That way we can secure none of it ever happens. See that? It's a fear because a leader needs to lead. A leader is going to answer to God for every service. If this service goes rogue, God's going to be like, what's up with the leadership? Right? So there's something about then, then the leadership gets together and goes, okay, so we don't get in trouble. We're going to keep it at this level. That's what we're doing. We're going to keep it at this level. And then we don't have to worry about it. Okay? And then what that says is, what's our highest level of understanding? Well, I'm pretty sure my husband has a higher level of understanding. me. That's just how I view it. I mean, the word just flies out of him, and I'm impressed by it every day. At the same time, um, his level is only going to take us so far. Then we're going to cap off. So that's the decision that's made by a board. It's like, who's got the highest level of understanding here? Okay, that's where we're going to cap off at. You see that? And then we'll turn around. Here's what's crazy about it. Then we'll spend hours, if we do with these churches, I know we spend hours, praying for revival. <laughs> we, this, if you look at this like a business, it's like it's not, something about we need to have a team meeting here and re, redo how our business is running. Because if we're going to take the time to pray for revival, it has to be to the level of his understanding, not to the level of our understanding. You see it? Ah. <laughs> and so, uh, if we're to be his witnesses, the word witness means to be seen and heard at all costs because the word witness means the word martyr. To be seen and heard at all costs, even unto death. So, when we present Holy Spirit and how he wants to baptize you and infill you and move on you and let it rain and send the fire and all the phrases that we have that describe him, there's something required of us. We have to first get a higher level of understanding by the Spirit of the living God. Do you know when you were not born again, you had a low level of understanding, a low level of knowledge. Somebody presented the knowledge, and the only reason you got born again 
was what? Holy Spirit moved on the understanding part, and all of a sudden you were like, say what? So what you're saying is like, I would go to hell without him. What you're saying is that I'm not living the full, I see, I felt like I wasn't living the full life. That's what you're saying, and this is the answer, this is the way, the truth, the life. All of a sudden, you don't even have to say much. There'll be such an aha moment because it's the level of the Holy Spirit's understanding that gets on the person, and there it is. Have you ever been trained in evangelism? You know, 10 different ways, and you get out and you try to use those 10 different ways and nobody gets saved. Because you're saying, I got knowledge. That's what I got. I got the Romans road. I am so knowledged up. You ain't getting away from me. There's no place for you to go. I'm going to let you know that you're a sinner. And I'm going to let you know. Okay, th that's a good thing to know the Romans road. That's cool to know that. But if you're going to try to get someone born again off of the Romans road, and that's your knowledge base, the only power that is there, which is powerful, is the word of God itself. It's not you. It's the word of God you're speaking that will go in just like a two-edged sword and sort some things out in their life. But the best component that is missing is when we're walking in the Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit, and we prayed up, and we're allowing the Holy Spirit to bring them understanding. So I know this from going back to when I first got born again in that revival. Went to school the next day. This was my witnessing. So there's like this service, and they're doing it like every night. Do you want to go with me? Well, what's it about? I don't know. People like raise their hands and stuff. And then um, sometimes people cry and sometimes people are shouting. But, you know, then they'll have live music. And, and so you want to go with me? Sure. Sure. Over and over and over. Why? I didn't know, but I had the baptism of the Spirit. Where was the Romans Road? Where did I present the big thing? Where did I say, and you come in and we'll give you a free coffee cup? Oh, sure, we'll come. You know, I didn't say none of that. I'm just like, it sounded crazy. When I think back, if I took that same thing now and be like, let's go street witnessing and we'll say that to everyone. I, it, no. <laughs> but because I was lit by the Spirit, then I carried that out there. Who knows what they heard? Who knows what they heard? I'm just like, and then people raise, and then sometimes you cry, and yeah. <laughs> that was my level of understanding. Whole bunch of people in our high school got saved. It fled through our family like wildfire. And there wasn't anybody who really knew the Romans Road. We're praying for a supernatural revival, yet we're trying to keep it knowledge-based. There's something about worship. You can be trained in, in playing different instruments or whatever, and it don't matter. You can make it sound real good. Some churches go hire unsaved people, and their band is tight. And it's like, wow, they're really good at worship. And they put them up on stage. But it's different when Holy Spirit moves. Let's get a lot of knowledge up on this stage. Well, it's good to have some knowledge. You should be able to play an instrument. But we're looking for the anointing. Your knowledge can't solve the problem in your family. It'll help, but it's going to be Holy Spirit understanding and the operation of the Spirit that's going to move and hover and brood like he did over the waters when he created. He hovered and he brooded, and then he spoke into it. And things changed, and things were created new. So you're having a problem in your family. You're having a problem with your finances. Let him hover and brood over it. No, but this is what I know to my level of understanding, you know. And then we'll share with each other. Well, you know what you need to do? I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my level of knowledge right now. Rather than, you know, I got some thoughts on that, but let's pray. Let's pray and get the higher level of understanding. Do you see that? We're stuck praying for something that's such a high level of super on the natural to the level, and when then we try to keep it to the level of our understanding. That's why 
churches don't like it if all of a sudden there's a falling out of people all over the floor and nobody really understands what's going on. That's got, that's, that's got to be demonic. Dreams are demonic. Visions are demonic. Well, somebody might have taught you that in your knowledge base. But I just dare you to begin to talk to Holy Spirit. He'll bring you an understanding about the little knowledge we have. It'll blow your face off. Mm-hmm. That's how you know when God showed up. So it was interesting, last night we had played a video by uh, David Wilkerson, and he was talking about there is a cost to revival. There's a cost to the spirit moving, and that cost is the yieldedness of our own heart to be so fluid with him and let him do what he's here to do. Oh, that scares me. That scares me. Well, here's the thing. I'd be a little bit scared, too, if I didn't have pastors or leaders who could shut something down if it went rogue. Yeah? I mean, there's a holiness to it. Can we go rogue? Yeah, we could go rogue. You should know if we were going rogue. You should know. Then there's a board. There's some people who will come and correct. But at the same time, that doesn't mean we sit up here like little minions and like, well, that was so off this morning. We'll just have to pray that changes. No, no, we're going to mature the saints. That's what I'm talking about today, maturing our way of thinking. And when we go into worship this morning, I'm not looking for my understanding of worship to stay the same. I already capped out. This is what I got right here. But the heavenly worship, if you stepped out of your body into the heavenlies and listened to the choir singing there, the worship, you couldn't stand in it. You could not stand in the holiness of God. Well, that's for when we get to heaven. That's for now, right here, this morning. That's for now. But we have to change uh, and and wherever we're unyielded, open our heart to be yielded. Whatever you want of me, Lord God. Whatever you want. You want me at the altar this morning? I will go. Yeah, well, they didn't invite people to go. Doesn't matter. Come. Do you want me on my knees this morning? Well, nobody else is doing that. Do it. We don't have that thing. Now, if somebody goes rogue and gets all weird, like there was a church service down in Minneapolis where they felt like they were chickens. And the Holy Spirit was using them as chickens, and <laughs> just saying, just saying. I mean, um, that lasts about two seconds up in here, right? And so you need to feel protected. At the same time, we have to come outside of our level of understanding. We're asking him for something bigger that we can't house in our level of understanding. So it takes the spirit of the living God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Your ways of doing things, your precepts, your commands, your ways of doing things come right now to our level of understanding. What? On earth as it already is in heaven. So if I prayed for heavenly worship this morning, God's go, do it. Come on over. Be praying in the spirit. I'll take you there. And then we go, well, you know, I just want that. But I don't, I just want to max out in my level of understanding on that. I wasn't asking for it to get a little wild. You see what I'm saying? That's how we pray. It's like, you know, driving a car and you go forward and then you go backward and then you go forward. It's what? Let's let it loose. Be loosed in the spirit to use your pie hole, which is where your faith comes out. Yeah? Allow God to give you a vision this morning just by saying, I'm open to it. You know, it's just like we don't go demon seeking. You don't be like, I'm going to see a vision. I'm going to see, you know, yeah, you're going to see something. Because <laughs> now you're in the flesh. Just be open to him. 
Be open to him and allow him to take you places and it will freak you out. And that's usually when you don't say anything to anybody up front because you're like, I have not seen that before. I did not experience that before. Good. It's about time. And let it just move in you. Let's stand. So, scripture where it talks about Beelzebub and, you know, and just, you know, the kingdoms can't fight against themselves or they will not stand, right? So, here's what ends up happening. It will be like, well, how do we know if it doesn't just get demonic? Who are we serving here? It might get fleshly. At times, people might get in the flesh trying to figure out where the spirit is. But if we don't experience something, no one's going to grow to a point where we lock into it. But we'll ask it to come. Wouldn't it be something if it just was like Azusa Street? Oh, wouldn't it be something? Because we hear about it like it's far away. Well, let's bring it close personal here this morning. Well, nah, that's not my level of understanding. That would make me uncomfortable. So we're wanting something we don't want to house. Because we pray for revival. Revival hits this place. It will require something of each and every one of us. We will have to die in a way to ourselves that we have never died before. Why? Well, I just wanted some people to get saved. That's it. Well, that's my level of understanding. Then we'll call that revival. Somebody cried a little. There was someone at the, we are having revival. <laughs> I was saved in revival. That's a little drop of something. I was in services where people, there were people here saying, I'm so sorry I offended you. I'm so sorry. I don't know why we've hated each other for years. And there'd be somebody over there with their face down, just praying and crying out to God for their family. And a demon manifesting over here. At the same time, people were getting led to Christ, and some in that corner were getting filled with the Holy Ghost every night. But it required something of the leadership. It required something of the church. It required everybody to come up to a heavenly understanding and let it happen till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. The anointing requires something of us. Let's have the band come and we're going to pray while they do. The reason I'm praying in tongues is because really, uh, what can you say to, but to the level of your understanding right now, right? So it's best you just go right into. We're looking for more, Lord Jesus. We're looking for more. It's available to us. You've made it available, Holy Spirit. You are here now in us, around us, on us. Oh, when the Spirit of God comes up on you, you will prophesy. When he comes up on you, so even when the worship starts this morning, we're not looking for our level of understanding to see our level of understanding as if they do the song well, we'll sing with them. If not, it'll be awkward and so nothing will happen. It don't matter what they sound like this morning. We are hungering and thirsting for revival. Change. Change. Change our own hearts, Lord God. Change us. We cry out for our family members. We cry out for this nation. We cry out, Lord, for the leadership to quit boxing the Holy Spirit up. Forgive us, Holy Spirit, that you might move and we not be afraid of what's required of us. Forgive us for that fear and that selfish way of thinking. You can require everything you want because we had an exchange where you made us into new creations. You made us into new creations. You gave your life and now we give ours. And now we give ours. 
Kele hai o songro ne mere la ira ta siste ya. Ritele ana na na solo re be brata na sa sara la ra na na na. Beyond mechanical thinking, beyond the 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 bulletins thinking, beyond all of that, we set it to us. We don't even care. We want you. Your will be done here this morning. Your will, your precept, your ways of doing things be done in this house. There are people watching online and people here this morning. You're believing for a family member. Let's do that together right now. Let's link our faith beyond our understanding. We're going to pray in the spirit. And then we're going to call things that are not as though they were. We're asking for a hovering and a brooding over the waters in their body, in their soul, in their heart, and in their spirits. That you would set it right, their misunderstanding, Lord God. That they would get an aha moment of your love and find understanding. That they would step up and having done all to stand, they'll be in that spot in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for salvation power that takes the limits off. 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 In the name of Jesus. They are loose free. No limits. No limits. No limits. No limits. We call them by faith to your throne. We call the situation to be a right. We call that which is twisted and knotted to be unknotted here today. It's unknotted here today. We call it by faith in the name of Jesus. We're praying in power. We're believing. We come boldly before his throne of grace in our hour of need. And we ask what we will and he will grant it to us. Because we're in the spirit by the spirit he has made a way where there seems to be no way his name is Jehovah Saboeth the God of war and the appointed time and he is warring on our behalf right now even when our men and women have died for for this country that freedom that was bought that we're remembering this weekend Lord God and let it say instituted that freedom we, we just pray that the Spirit of God hover and brood over every church and light up the lampstands like never before or shut them down. We don't have time for games. Shut them down or light them up, Lord. We call the kings and the priests to arise. Get up, get up, get up out of your chairs, kings and priests. I do the work of the kingdom. So I'll just give you an example. It's 10 o'clock and some of you got little jiggy things going on. It's like, oh, we're going to pray right into the surface. Yeah, we are. We ain't moving from the spot till the Holy Spirit says that's enough. See, faith without works is dead. And so we'll stand in the spot of the works, Lord God, and let the faith arise. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Those who are suffering something physically in your body, and this is, a, this is a moment where you're set about done with this, I'm done with this, why don't you come to the front? And we're going to pray in the spirit over you. We're not going to pray to the level of our understanding because you need much more than that. You've already done that. You've already done the level of your own understanding. And now we need something more. We need something heavenly to come down. Can you feel the fire? Something changed in the atmosphere. There is a fire of God that will burn out any sickness and disease right out of your body. It's a higher level of energy. It's a higher level of understanding. So we come up, 
We come up, Lord God. Pull us up. Pull us up to your ways of thinking, your plans, your will. It is your will that we be healed. Will you heal me, Lord? They said in Mark, and he said, yes, I will. Yes, I will. And when he went to the cross, he did. Come up here, Dave. So I'm going to lay hands on you right now in the name of Jesus. Where's your wife? Where's Vicky? See, this anointing that's here is going to go beyond his level of understanding. When he starts on that end praying for people, he's not releasing his level of understanding. He's releasing the fire of God. That's beyond who we are. Come on up here, Vicky. Fire of God. 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 I want you to just go down starting on that end and just lay hands on people. For the fire of God to come. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, she, she, paparo. Rosa, now let me get somebody behind here. Can we get somebody behind here? Ula ba yur to se kreshti. Rita ma ba yur los hososum. Recorrect in the body what needs to be corrected. The signals that need to speak to each other. Start talking now. Start talking now. Now, 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 now. Ropa ho sala ba ba yur to so so lo ba doma na nakisi. Jiti basure da 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 fire. Fire, 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 fire. Ucho stopa iti ti preta na hasata na rato solola mamba rito solola ba koba mana masia. Jiti zasaharda fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for more, 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 more. What she's been asking for, higher thoughts, higher ways of living, higher ways of her body functioning in the name of Jesus now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the substance of things hoped for. Your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And it's beyond. It's even beyond our level of understanding and believing. It's your grace. It's your grace. Jesus. Be corrected. Be corrected in the body. Be corrected in the body. Now, now faith, now faith. Right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. You know that song, Anything Can Happen? Right? <laughs> That's how we should look at our Sunday morning services. Or you are stuck in the level of your understanding. Right on? That's my way of saying Amen. <laughs> now, as they're being prayed for, let's begin to give God glory in a way that we haven't done for a long time. You know how when you get lackadaisical, you just sing, if you do that at all. Let your body sway to the music. Let something come out where faith comes out right here. Out of this pie, whole faith is nigh thee, even in my mouth. So when I say some worship today, I'm saying it in faith, by faith, to the God of faith. I want you to understand that faith is a gift. Now you got the gifts of the spirit, but I'm talking about it's a gift to us because if it was pulled away from us, we would be so lost. Our brain couldn't grow. Our body couldn't change Not because we had have no navigator to take us anywhere. It's a gift to us. Thank you, Lord, for that gift. Thank you for the measure of faith you've given us and the expanding of our faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Now, people are looking for 
uh, an answer in a situation where you're like, I don't know. I, just, I mean, I don't know what else to do. Once we say that, that's actually our subconscious telling you the truth about your, your knowledge. It's like, I don't know what else to do. Well, if I told you, well, go back in your brain and look for something else. There ain't nothing in there. That's why your subconscious said, I don't know what else to do. So it's going to require some Holy Spirit knowledge, but then on top of it, sandwiched in between and on the bottom, that knowledge has got to be encased by the Spirit. If you're in a situation where you're just like, I don't even know what else to do. Come on up here as we start worship and just stand in the front and bask. Just, you know what this means, bask? You're like you're hanging it. Yeah. I have an expectation that God's going to give me what I'm supposed to do. <sighs> don't brace yourself for such a big deal. It could be just a simple command when you stand up here and just say, God, show me the next thing that I need to do. If, I, if I'm not ready to handle the whole thing, just give me the next thing that I'm supposed to do. Nobody else? All right, let's start worship. Because you need that next thing. And sometimes it's the next right hard thing that we have to do that we need the information about.